Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. I want to talk about what I believe is a scandal of epic proportion. It might be unintentional on the part of healthcare, but nevertheless, it affects millions of people or has affected millions of people, and it's happening every single day. And the chances are that if it hasn't happened to you, it has happened to a loved one or will happen to a loved one. And it relates to how we treat high blood pressure, hypertension, when anybody is admitted to the hospital. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to keep on talking about it. I'm not going to stop because trust me when I say it happens every single day. I've worked up and down the East Coast in the United States in a variety of different settings. I've worked internationally in the UK, in Australia. I'm sure it happens in lots of other countries as well. Millions of people, of course, are on blood pressure pills, and I won't get into my three hour lecture on how high blood pressure hypertension is almost always due to insulin resistance if it occurs below a certain age. But millions of people get put on these medications and then they stay on these medications, often for decades. And this is the scenario that typically happens, typically an older person. Please don't let this happen to you or a loved one. Here we go. So when anybody is sick, their blood pressure can often fluctuate wildly. Sometimes it can increase, especially if somebody is in pain. But the much more common scenario, in my experience, is that blood pressure drops. People have been getting sick for a few days, a few weeks often by the time they're admitted to hospital. And their blood pressure is much lower than their usual baseline. They've had a number of symptoms, they may not have been eating and drinking, they may be dehydrated, they haven't got enough fluid in them, their vessels might be dilated, and lo and behold, their blood pressure is low. And the problem is that when they're at home at baseline, they take two, three, sometimes more blood pressure pills. It could even be one blood pressure medication. The same principle still applies. And when they come into the hospital, they get continued on these blood pressure medications. And can you guess what comes next? So the boxes are ticked and they get continued on these pills when their blood pressure is already quite low. It might be in the low 100s, which is quite low. So they are continued on these medications and typically a hold parameter is applied. Sometimes it's not, but usually, at least where I've worked, because I've worked in the better places, a hold parameter is applied. So if the blood pressure is below a certain level, the nurse won't administer the blood pressure pill. The problem is this. Often, protocol dictates, at least in the United States, that you only hold the blood pressure medication if it's less than, say, 100. Often that's the order that the doctor writes. Hold blood pressure pill if systolic blood pressure is less than 100. So here is the problem. 100 is already low. So if it's, say, 102, 105, the nurse will go around and administer the blood pressure medications. This could be one, two, three, four pills which are administered when the blood pressure is already low, way lower than the patient's usual baseline. So guess what happens then? Blood pressure drops even lower. It drops to the 90s or even the 80s. I'm talking about the systolic blood pressure. And these pills shouldn't have been administered. What should have happened, what I usually do, typically when somebody's admitted to the hospital, if I suspect that this is going to be a problem, I lower the doses of the pills. Often I hold one or two of them, but I make the parameter for holding it much higher so that they don't suffer with these wild drops in blood pressure. And let me tell you this, I've heard in a few places that nurses have a common saying that the time for rapid responses, that's what we call them in the United States when a patient's mental status may change, they become less conscious, they are unresponsive or their vitals become dangerous, is usually 30 minutes to an hour after their medications are administered. Of course, this could apply to lots of medications. It could apply to sedative medications, pain medications as well. But I'm talking specifically, obviously in this video, about blood pressure pills. So blood pressure drops dangerously low. The patient may even start to pass out. And then a rapid response is called by the nurses. And then there's an emergency assessment and the doctors need to give fluids. They need to bring the patient back, make sure they're okay. Sometimes they may even transfer the patient to the ICU. But let me tell you that this happens every single day in hospitals around the United States. And it happens because of this mindless protocol following. No common sense. This is very typical of the world of healthcare and medicine these days. 
doctors, other clinicians can't think outside the box. They do things because that's how they're always done. They don't think to themselves, hold on, what am I doing? Is this the right thing to be doing? Am I doing something which doesn't make sense? Piling on blood pressure pills to somebody who's already sick. Is that the right thing to be doing? So why is this more of a problem now? Well, first and foremost, we see more people on more and more blood pressure pills all the time compared to a few decades ago when insulin resistance wasn't such a pandemic. We didn't have so many people on antihypertensive medications. But I want to talk specifically about what you can do if it's you or a family member to avoid being a victim of overtreatment of blood pressure in the hospital. Number one, first and foremost, I want you to make sure that the medical team, the doctor and the nurses know the correct medications that your loved one is on. Be a strong advocate. This applies to the whole medication list, but obviously here I'm talking about blood pressure pills. Make sure that they've got the correct names of the pills. You'd be surprised how often the computer is wrong. And make sure that they know the exact dosages at baseline. And then the following day, I want you to call the nurse's station again and make sure that the nurses have this correct. It's simply too important to get anything wrong. Number two, I want you to check yourself on what the vital signs are. I know this may seem ridiculous. You may think the nursing team is there, the doctors are there, but trust me when I say, things fall through the cracks all the time. Check on the vital signs. Nowadays, you can often access this information remotely on your phone, my chart, etc. Lots of people are using this, but if you can't do that, ask specifically what the blood pressure is. And when I want alarm bells to ring, as if the blood pressure, the top number systolic, is in the low 100s or even 110s, Make sure that your loved one is not being loaded up with blood pressure pills. And then relay this concern to the medical team. Tell the medical team, typically it will be the nurse first, that you're concerned that the blood pressure is low and you would like the blood pressure medications reviewed and the dosages possibly reduced. And number three, I want you to check yourself if your relative, your loved one, is having any symptoms of low blood pressure, including weakness, dizziness, especially when standing up. Are they feeling giddy? Are they feeling like they're about to faint? These are very common symptoms of low blood pressure. This is why we need to keep tabs on blood pressure very carefully in the hospital. It's so common. Maybe your loved one even needs intravenous fluids to help with their low blood pressure. A lot of sick people do. But we cannot be piling more blood pressure medications on these types of patients. And of course, when they leave the hospital, check if they're still recovering. Should they go back on their high dosages of blood pressure pills? This gets missed all the time. You wouldn't believe how often the boxes are ticked. Continue old pills when they're still running at a low blood pressure. So quite often, I'd say the majority of time when I discharge a patient who's been in the hospital, I end up lowering their blood pressure pills and I will give advice like follow up with your primary care doctor very closely or monitor your blood pressure at home and then see if the blood pressure pills can safely be increased to their previous dose. Hopefully they don't even need to be because so many people are overtreated in the first place. So there you go, some background and some tips to avoid you or a loved one being a victim of what I truly believe is a real scandal. And it's happening because of a lack of thought, a lack of common sense, and the whole mentality that healthcare and medicine should be about piling chemicals, pills, injections onto people and not understanding that sometimes, actually a lot of the time, that is not the right thing to be doing. So I wanted to make this video to help you or a family member if you ever find yourself in this circumstance. A lot of harm happens in hospitals. Of course, I'm not saying it's deliberate. I work in a hospital myself in acute care and I understand the reality of working within the system and what goes wrong on a daily basis. And I do believe that if this was ever properly studied, it would be a difficult study to do, but I am quite certain, my hypothesis is, that great harms result from overtreating blood pressure in the hospital. And it's getting worse and worse every single year. So please don't let that be you or a loved one. Thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment down below. I hope that was helpful. Check out my website, my health programs, and my free downloads. Those links are down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again very soon.